Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this video. Here we're about to go in and configure Splunk to use HTTPS and configure the certificates in Splunk to use a custom CA certificate. We'll be using OpenSSL for creating the CSRs and the CA is a Windows server here in my lab. So here we are at my homepage for the Splunk instance and to start out, let's check out the security information. As you can see, we're only using the standard HTTP protocol and not the secure version of it. This is the first thing that we need to fix. When initially installing Splunk Enterprise, the application defaults to using the unsecure HTTP. In order to fix this, let's hop into the command line and modify one of the configuration files. I'm SSH'd into the Splunk box and am in the slash temp slash Splunk directory here. I'm going to use nano to modify the localweb.com file so that we can turn on the ability to use the HTTPS protocol. To do so, I just have to configure the enable Splunk Web SSL configuration item to true. And let me save it and exit. All right, now that that's done, for those changes to take effect, I'm going to simply restart the Splunk application using this command. The directory that you may have to type in may vary depending on your installation, but in general, the Splunk home directory goes here, then the Splunk item is in the, is in the bin directory. All right. Now, once that's finished restarting, we should refresh our browser and now we can see that we're prompted with the security warning that the site's not trusted. Since this is the default self-signed certificate that the Splunk server is presenting to our browser, it wouldn't be trusted by default. We can bypass this and create an exception if we wanted to, but instead we're going to modify the certificate that it has. Looking at it though, we can validate right here that it's a self-signed one by seeing the information that by seeing the information that it's presenting. The organization is Splunk user. The email is support at splunk.com. These are all indicators that it's the self-signed cert. All right, let me remove the exception real quick and hop back into our CLI terminal. There are many different ways you can use OpenSSL in order to generate your CSRs and convert your certificates. So the way that I'm showing you isn't the only way. First, we need to create the private key for the request. We're going to use AES-256 for the encryption and a 2048-bit key. Let me type in the passcode and we're done. As you can see, the key is right here in the temp directory. Up next, we need to generate the CSR or certificate signing request. This is the item that we will give to the certificate authority to sign and issue a certificate to us from. In order to do so, here's the command using OpenSSL takes in the private key and spits out the CSR for us. We have to enter some additional information when we're using the default OpenSSL configuration, such as the country, state, organization, and so on. Each one of these items helps to identify the certificate and gives you information as to who the owner is. After all that, I'm going to decrypt the private key so that we can have it available if needed. And after we're done with that, we can view the CSR information by using the cat command for it. What I'm going to do with this is copy and paste it from here into my CA. This is the information that the certificate authority needs in order to be able to generate the cert from the beginning of the request to the end. And in my CA self-serve window, I'm going to go to request a certificate, then advanced certificate request. We copy the CSR information into the request block and I'm changing the template to web server since that's what we're using the cert for. And once we hit submit, we're taken to the issuance page. Here's where we can download the certificate and the chain. We want DER encoded here and we'll download the cert. I'm opening up my CyberDuck window so I can transfer the newly downloaded cert to the server now. I renamed it off screen to abrahamsplunk.cer and once that transfers, we can validate that it's here. Okay, good. Now I need to convert the cert to the PEM format as that's what's required by Splunk to be able to use it properly. Using the OpenSSL program again, here's the command to do so. My inform is going to be DER and the out form will be PEM. I have a directory set up in the Etsy slash auth area called custom that I wanna drop the certificates for Splunk to use into. 
So I'm navigating there first, then I'll use my mv command to get the pemser and the key file there. I'm going to change the ownership of the files to the Splunk user so that it can manage them as well. Now, the only thing left to do is to modify the configuration to tell Splunk where the certs are that we wanted to use. If we don't do this, Splunk will just use the default self sign one like we saw before. So we open the local web.com file again that we modified earlier. All we have to do is enter the information for the private key path and the server cert, in this case from that directory that we just moved them to. All right, let's save this. Now to restart the Splunk server so that the new configuration can take effect. I'm just going to speed this up so we don't have to wait. Once it comes back up though, we can do the web page refresh again and see that the SSL connection is now showing that we trust this certificate. I installed the CA certificate into the browser earlier so it knew to trust anything that the Abraham CA signed. Pulling up the actual cert, we can see all of this information that I input during the CSR process in OpenSSL, and we can see the algorithms that were used for it. And as you can see, we also have the signer's information here. We can look at the Abraham DC cert that was used to sign our server cert. And that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to create and install an SSL certificate in Splunk. Be sure to subscribe for more how-to videos.